The Halo TV series has dropped, and one thing that is becoming abundantly clear to many people watching it is that Master Chief is revealing his face a lot. And I may have a theory to suggest as to why he's revealing his face as much as he is. So, let's get into this very quick lore and theory regarding the Silver Timeline. Welcome back to Installation 00, and over the 20-something years that we've had Halo in our lives, Master Chief has never once revealed his face in a game. He's come tantalizingly close. In Halo C, at the very end, he takes off his helmet, but the face reveal is obscured by the airframe of the longsword. And yes, people managed to mod it in such a way where they could fly around and actually look inside of the cockpit as he takes off his helmet, and underneath his helmet there is another helmet. So, yeah, that was a thing. In Halo 2, at the very start, he puts on his new Mark VI armor. The helmet is just resting on the work surface, and then he lifts it up, and just before the camera gets there in time, Chief puts his helmet on and seals it shut, meaning we don't get to see his face there either. All through Halo 3, we never once see Chief's face, although it was worth noting that way back in the Halo 3 multiplayer beta, some people discovered that if you got the camera angle at just the right angle and kind of forced the position of the Spartan, you could see underneath the visor and see a ghostly looking face beneath the helmet, but of course this wasn't technically speaking Master Chief's face. And it was shut down at effectively just being the Spartan multiplayer character model, so to speak. Halo 4 rocks around, and Chief finally takes off his armor at the very end of the game, and we get just his eyes revealed, showing a war-torn soldier beneath, but nowhere near enough to get a true sense of what he looks like. Halo 5, he doesn't once take off his helmet. Halo Infinite, he doesn't once take off his helmet. Even in the advertisements for many of the games, we've had odd glimpses and tantalizing hints at what Chief might look like, but we've never actually had a formal face reveal. The point we're driving at here is that, aside from a few of the comic books, which denote what he looks like when he was a little younger, we haven't seen Master Chief's face. And his characterization and who he is as a Spartan isn't adversely affected by the absence of a face reveal. In fact, if anything, it's enhanced by it. Chief was originally conceived as being a character, a faceless character, a suit of armor that you occupy, that the player can make their own, and superimpose their own personality onto. Well, over the years, Chief's character has developed. He has become more interactive, he has become more expressive, and as a consequence, the immersion factor, so to speak, of us being the Master Chief is somewhat being withdrawn, and his character is being tested effectively to see as to whether or not it can stand the test of time, and so far, I think it certainly can. We are getting a human element, a human story being told by a faceless warrior. His interactions with others around him and their emotional tone and how his body language transmits more about what he's thinking and feeling than his facial expressions, gives a layer of depth to the Master Chief that we haven't had, and we're only just starting to get now the story's starting to mature somewhat. In all these years, Master Chief hasn't once revealed his face. And yet, the Silver Timeline, the Halo TV series debuts, Chief takes off his helmet in Episode 1. Why? Well, in episode one, there's a human element being told. Chief realizes that he doesn't want to eliminate Quan. He doesn't want to kill her. So, as a consequence, he reveals to Quan that he is a human. 
he is fundamentally flawed, I suppose, in a way of being, by taking off his helmet and exposing a vulnerability to Quan to gain her trust. That's a damned good reason to do so. Episode 2 rocks round and he spends practically the entire episode without his helmet on. That's a little harder to justify, but I think I may have stumbled upon the reason as to why. There's a moment, an instant, at the very end of the episode, where Chief puts his helmet back on while he's still on the rubble and still with Quan and Soren. He slides the helmet in place and there's this moment. It's fleeting, but it's there. The helmet engages and his body language changes. It becomes more set, more rigid. Why? Throughout the entirety of the episode, it is driven, this particular point is driven by Soren over and over and over again that there are implants in Spartan bodies which stop them from feeling. Chief himself dismisses it and says, no, it just keeps us focused. But the reality is that once Soren removed his own chip, it opened his eyes, in his own words, for the first time, and he could actually enjoy life. Chief can't even taste flavors in his mouth when he's consuming food. And yet Sauron can because he's removed this chip. This narrative is pushed over and over and over again. On top of this, when Cortana is brought up, when they're having the meeting of the council in the UNSC, Halsey says that the consciousness of a smart AI will overwrite the consciousness of the Spartan literally taking away every ounce of humanity from the Spartans. Their bodies are augmented to the absolute pinnacle of their scientific and technological capabilities. They're wearing the most elite and most powerful powered exoskeleton system in existence. The only thing left is this human consciousness that they're also planning on overwriting with a smart AI. It's even hinted, <laughs> expressly stated in fact, in Halo 5, that there are visors that are integrated into the Mjolnir Gen 2 platform which have augmented reality systems and mixed reality systems built into them, which completely change the way in which the Spartan perceives the battlefield and keeps them more focused. It can alter stimuli, alter what the Spartan sees, keeps them on task, keeps them robotic. So with all of this in mind, I circle back to my original statement. I think with this information, we now know why Chief is not wearing his helmet in the TV series. Chief is at a difficult time in his life, he's questioning orders. In fact, he's directly disobeyed an order to eliminate Quan. As a consequence, he's working out some things, he's thinking things through, making his own choices. Is it that there is so small amount of his faculties that he actually has control over, that the only way he can exert any degree of control over himself is by not wearing his helmet. His armor is powerful beyond measure, but he's limited by the very chips inside of his body in what he can do and what he can see and perceive. If his helmet is anything like it is in the law. If his visor systems are manipulating what he sees and keeping him quote unquote focused, then putting on his helmet may fundamentally change his perceptions and keep him focused and task orientated. 
So is the choice to not wear his helmet the choice to maintain some degree of control over himself? I mean, it stands to reason. The entire episode has been about controlling Spartans. Controlling the super soldiers. Keeping them on task. Keeping them focused. Keeping them mission orientated. Not allowing their humanity to get involved. Not allowing them to make their own choices. That's the entire focus of episode two. And for nearly the entirety of the episode, Chief doesn't wear his helmet. He doesn't want to actively pull the chip out of his own spine. One, because perhaps the tools aren't there and available to do so. Two, because he doesn't want to perhaps outwardly express that he is taking executive action to remove the shackles that have kept him bound and that his superiors put in place. That's perhaps too much of an overstep. But knowing that his helmet can filter his senses, filter his perceptions, alter the way he perceives things, is removing his helmet the only ounce of self-control he actually has. The only way in which he can exert some will of his own on what he's doing. Mjolnir works best when it's fully complete, when the helmet is in place. And he's deliberately taking steps to avoid that. And if you watch that scene, that one scene, over and over again, as I have watched it many a time, there does seem to be a deliberate moment when the helmet is finally sealed in place, Chief's body language changes. It's subtle. It's very subtle. But you tell me that it's not there. Because all I'm seeing is Chief sliding that helmet home, locking it in place, and his humanity evaporates again. He goes back to the quote-unquote cyborg, the robot the super soldier. Not wearing his helmet is the only control that Chief has on his executive functions, on his ability to make his own choices. That's the reason Chief isn't wearing his helmet, and he only puts it on to save face. He only puts it on because he knows he's returned to the UNSC and he needs to keep up appearances. He hasn't divulged any information, really, as to why he did what he did, as to his motivations. Not even to Halsey. So he's playing this extraordinarily close to his chest. In his own way, it's the only thing he can control. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members, Spartan10148, my Metarch, Dylan, FalconX003, Kenwood, Irrefutable Justice, Leon, Neek and Ramiz, my monitors, Alvin, Andrew, Brand, Brian, Cameron, Chris, Darian, Devon, Flaming Halo, Greenblood, Kyle, Legions Lost, Michael, Prophet Bear, Spartan and Wolf, my sub-monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, my diligent enforcers and all the other awesome people that have jumped aboard to support the channel over at Patreon. Another shout out to Todd Morrison, my transcendent YouTube member. And just one quick reminder to support us on all major social media channels including Discord. Much love from Zero Zero. Take it easy everyone and find peace in the domain.